one of the several small bazaars located along Sarawak River, Tondong has its fair share of ups and downs. The population is mainly made up of Chinese, whose coming to this town predates the coming of the White Rajas. With Bao as the main settlement, Tondong and several other bazaars in the district shared quite a similar history and fate. Tondong is about 36 kilometers from downtown Kuching. Basically, there were two waves of Chinese immigration to Tondong. The first wave were mainly miners from Dutch Borneo in the 1830s. They initially settled in Baut Lama, Mao San in Chinese, and later spread to the surroundings like Jambusan, Paku, and Tondong. Tondong was the furthest river riverine port that trading boats could reach, making it an important and bustling river port. All this came to an end in the aftermath of the Chinese uprising of 1857. The clash was due to the unhappiness of the miners towards Brooks Road. The Chinese were already involved in mining years before the arrival of James Brook. James Brook started to control the activities of the Chinese in the 1850s to a stage where the Chinese couldn't take it anymore, hence the uprising. Led by Liu Shangpang, on 18 February 1857, 600 Chinese miners marched to Tondong and from there sailed down to Kuching in an attempt to overthrow Brook's government. The effort failed and the Chinese miners were almost wiped out. The remaining survivors escaped to Dutch Borneo. In the aftermath, Tondong suffered and the whole population deserted the town in fear of persecution from the Brook government. It took a few years before they returned in numbers to this area when the second Raja, Charles Brooke, encouraged the Chinese to come. The second wave mainly came from China via Singapore and Kuching. Jin 大多数都是讲客家话 Now no longer important, this was where trading boats birth in the old days. The road from the river to the bazaar has been reduced to a path. Small trading boats used to sail up to here. Before短短没有道路,我们要去收容门,要走路,过河,走路去收容门,我们要去补进,要救船。the new settlers pick up from where the first wave left off. However, this time the Chinese were more into trading with the local people and farming, especially cash crops. Among the first thing the Chinese would do when they settled in a new place was to build a tapak kong temple and this practice is unique to the Chinese of Southeast Asia. Chinese temple with the deity Tapak Kong overlooking the river. Mm. 
早上起来个交的时候，嗯，都会要去香香求保佑，嗯，求保佑平安。然后他们多数都会啊、呃、坐船过去小蛋缸那边香香，香香了才跑回来。所以那原主就看到这样就，感觉到很很麻烦了，就把香火请过来，在短廊这边做做做一间老的公寓这样。This particular temple looks towards another shrine that is nearer to the bazaar. This shrine had just undergone major upgrading works. It also occupied a strategic location overlooking the Sarawak River. And there is an association to manage the temple. Renowned educationist and photographer, the late Joseph Aloysius Kwekzi Hyang, in his book Bao, a pictorial record 1948 to 2017 gave a good description of the town in the 1950s. Serving as a center for trading in the area, the vibrant town was the place to go for the Bidayu from Singai who would bring their produce to sell to the traders in town and in return bought their provisions from the same place saving them the trouble of crossing the river to go to Bao or Kuching to sell their produce. He also mentioned that the 20 units of shop houses we see today were built in the early 1960s, replacing the old ones as seen in the photos here. Other than that, the Chinese were also involved in farming. Things were looking good then, despite the triple whammy of the Japanese occupation, confrontation, and the communist insurgency. Tondong was in the thick of action due to its proximity to Indonesia and was a black area during the communist insurgency where in 1972, Johnny Lee, a local resident, was caught, trialed in public, tortured and burnt alive by the insurgents in the town center on being accused of being a police informer. Ironically, after withstanding all these trials and tribulations successfully, the bazaar started to decline due to progress. This decline started when the Kuching Bau Road was completed, and river transportation was no longer important except for the people in town using Prahu Tambang to cross the river to go to Bau or Kuching. That too disappeared when the Kuching Lunduk Road was built, enabling Tondong to be connected to Kuching and Bau by road, but at the same time resulted in lesser people stopping by the town. Uh-huh. 我自己开了十几十年了，到现在了，也是三十多年了。我这在这里不不不开开开厂了。嗯，我呃本来是在这里住的，一小在这里出事的啦。嗯嗯嗯，我是呃现在是开这个餐厅，自己的咖啡店。
the youth seek greener pasture in other places. So what does the future holds for Tondong? The bridge that is being constructed across the Sarawak River. It will shorten the drive to Bau. A new township, Wan Singai, has sprouted about 500 meters from the old bazaar. In the blueprint for Bauk District, many development projects are being planned. Tondong Waterfront, Tondong Ridge, and many commercial, residential, and tourism projects are being planned. So the residents of Tondong are hopeful that things will pick up once again like the good old days. And the presence of a nice hotel in this bazaar is a sign of better things to come. Thank you for watching.